So you know me as Visions, otherwise known as Tellerine or IXI, Ixie in game. I used to be a Windwalker main, one of the best in the world compared to Chun Li and Volteria, who I consider as the best Windwalkers in the game as well. And you'll know that if you're on the forums, I'm a crusader of the Brewmaster being buffed. So I thought the forums aren't getting to them. I even got perma banned from the forums because Blizzard didn't like Brewmaster being buffed. They thought I was trolling, so I thought maybe another way to get to them might have been through a Brewmaster PvP guide explaining the hard points and the easy points about Brewmaster, what it does and how bad it is or how good it is. So I think I'd start this off with what's the comparison between Windwalkers and Brewmasters in a rated PvP environment? Well, Windwalkers, your main goal is to set up or it's to burst. You're, you're not much around for utility. You're not a mop windwalker where you had so many different abilities like disarm or zen meditation or fire blossoms where you could just really help your team even from a distance. You could eat traps with zen meditation. You could disarm a rogue out of stealth so that he couldn't cheap shot you out. It's really good things like that. But throughout WAD and then Legion coming in, windwalkers gotten pruned as every class has, but we lost all our utility. So I thought this might be a really good time to pick up a different spec. I try alts, I play my hunter, my rogue, and all this, and, you know, they're fun, but I never tried Brewmaster. I swapped to Brewmaster, and my very first rated game, I had so much fun. The spec is so unique that because nobody plays it, you just have so much fun. Even if people played it, I think I'd still have a lot of fun because it's just an interesting spec. It brings the burst of Windwalker, but on a much more in-depth level. You don't just have burst every minute, minute and a half, somewhere in there, depending on how many traits you have in your Serenity cooldown or whatever. So your burst is revolved around yourself and your team. But the difference between a Brewmaster and a Windwalker is a Brewmaster doesn't have really burst. Yes, you can have those really high crits and all that crap. You you can see my streams or anything, and you'll know that when I play my Brewmaster in like an RBG, for example, I can hit really hard. I can delete a team. But those are very situational. You don't get that all the time. Like a Windwalker, you know if he presses his burst, he's going to be doing a lot of damage. You have to respect the damage. But a Brewmaster, you can kind of just say fuck that. So Brewmaster is mostly just about your utility. You aren't playing for yourself in your burst, you're playing for your team. You don't get to burst unless you play for your team. So the idea of having a spec revolved literally around every other person in your group is a great idea. I'm not going to say it's good. Brewmaster burst, yeah, it can be insane. Brewmaster consistency is already garbage. But it's really fun to try and pull off. I think if mastered, Brewmaster could easily pull you upside along a Windwalker. Yeah, it's a tank spec. People don't respect tanks in PvP. It's like, oh no, it's a tank spec. Well, this is no fun. But in reality, you can kill a Brewmaster. You can kill a Windwalker. There's no difference between it. Just a little bit more health than a Windwalker. Bad cooldowns. Like, first of all, a Windwalker has, what, a one and a half minute wall? It's not even a good wall, but it's a wall, right? Well, Brewmasters have that same wall, except it's five and a half minutes longer on the cooldown. Unless you spec into it where you can reduce that cooldown by half of that. So, in reality, Brewmaster doesn't have much going for them defensively or offensively unless you get really lucky. It's not too much fun if you're not into constantly working with your team. Like I know some players, I'm not going to take any names out here, but they play only for themselves. If they can't do absolutely everything, then it's not going to work. So, in this guide, I'm going to be talking about PvP talents, your burst and consistency as a Brewmaster, and your rotation, what to do in the game, so what you're looking for, everything. And then I'll give you some closing thoughts. I was originally going to plan a some in-game examples. I was going to take clips from maybe RBGs to put into this guide, but I'm thinking I might push that off to a second part. We'll see what I decide to do. Um, there's also one other thing I have to clarify before I actually get into the talents. Brewmaster is about taking damage to do damage. So you're a healer, essentially, that does damage. So here's the talents. We're going to start off with your PvE talents and then your PvP talents. In PvE talents, I'd say in your tier 15 tree, Chi Wave, Out of Tiger, and Chi Burst. Chi Wave is the absolute worst here, uncontrollable, doesn't do a lot, low cooldown, it's not that bad, but it's not that great. 
Then you have Eye of the Tiger. I feel like it could be useful if you're constantly spamming your Tiger's Palm to maybe reduce the cooldown on your Bruise. Potentially you could use that, but I still think Chi Burst here is the absolute best. You has a low cooldown, and it does a decent amount of burst plus healing. So there's utility around it. You could use it. There's just it, it generally what I feel is the strongest out of these three, but I could be proven wrong. In your tier 30 talents, you have Celerity, Tiger's Lust, Chi Torpedo. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Celerity is garbage. Don't ever run this. Even as a Windwalker or a Mistweaver, don't run it. But then you have Tiger's Lust, which I feel is useful. It's situational. Same thing as Windwalker. You use it in certain situations. So if you're playing against a balanced druid and he root beams your healer, you could lust him out of that. If you're playing against a frost mage and you get rooted, you could lust yourself out of that. It's a situational, it's really good. I'd say you could run this in certain situations, but generally you run Cheat Torpedo. I use the same logic as I do when I play Mistweaver. High movement speed increase, low cooldown, and you go really far with it. So not horrible. In your tier 45 talents, I'd say Get to the Mist is absolute best. Just because you can constantly proc Gift of the Mists. Gift of the Mists is essentially a talent that gives you more healing with the more damage you take. What happens is Expel Harm procs as a Brewmaster when you get lower on health. So the lower you get, the higher chance it has to proc. And Expel Harm actually has a decent amount of healing. You can constantly proc it. So Gift of the Mist increases that proc chance. And the lower you get, the even higher it goes. And these stack, you can have multiple orbs out that give you expel harm proc. So you can constantly have those heals coming in very fast and very hard. You could, Essentially, you'll never die as a brewmaster as long as you're spamming expel harm. Then your second best talent, I'd say, is Black Ox Brew. It's very situational, actually. I could see it being useful if you run special delivery in your 90 tree, but I don't like it. It's just not good. I don't feel like you need to have it. And then your worst talent here is Light Brewing. It just reduces the cooldown and gives you an extra charge in your brews. Not good. In your 60 tree, we have Ring of Peace, Black Ox Statue, and Light Sweep. Black Ox Statue, absolutely the worst talent here. I've tried it in arenas against Demonology Warlocks. Doesn't taunt the pets off. Garbage. Ring of Peace, I can see being useful against double melee. Just to stop them in arenas from getting to the person. You can just put it down. Healer stands in the middle. Well, they can't get to them anymore. Not bad. Then Light Sweep. As the best, pretty obvious reason, 5 second stun, 45 second cooldown, AoE stun, it's really just consistently good. Every spec you play, I say you run Leg Sweep. Even Mist Weaver, I'd say you run Leg Sweep. In your 75 tree, you have Healing Elixirs, Mystic Vitality, and Dampen Harm. Dampen Harm is easily the worst talent here. It just reduces physical damage incoming up to 3 abilities by 50%. So you're not really stopping anything, you're just slowing down the damage that's coming in. You're not... There's no help coming from that. Then you have Mystic Vitality, which I could say being useful, maybe in RBGs against heavy, ha heavy, heavy, heavy caster comps. Because it increases the damage you stagger by 40% against the magical attacks. So, useful in very, very, very few situations. And the best talent here, Dealing Elixirs. Two charges, 30 second cooldown, 15% of your health. Really strong, you pretty much have 130% of your health pool, 100% of the time. And as a brewmaster, I think this is more important to have rather than anything else, just because you have a higher health pool than every other spec. So that 15% healing is really doing more healing than it would in like Windwalker or a mage for something. Here's your 90 talents. Special Delivery, Nyuza the Black Ox, and Russian Jade Wind. I'd say the worst talent here is Special Delivery. People think it's good. I've spoken to Reki or Final Requiem as some know him. He's the only other brewmaster in this game, and we've pretty much decided that Special Delivery actually isn't that good. It does a very little damage, but the proc of it is you get multiple of it. So what happens essentially is when you drink a brew, you have a 100% chance to throw a keg in the air at your location, which will come down about one and a half, two seconds later, and do splash AoE damage to all targets in eight yards. Well, that sounds good all, because you have multiple brews, right? Well, not really, because your brews are used for your damage. But you're also used for your surviving. So, when you give up your damage and your survivability for just a little bit of damage, it's not that good. 
But I could see this being good if you ran Black Ox Brew because you get extra charges of these brews, essentially. It's like an energizing brew, but for them. Not that bad, but not that good. I actually think Nayuza, the Black Ox, is the second best talent in this tree, though, because it's kind of like Zuben, doesn't do a lot of damage, has a somewhat of a CC... Okay, here's the thing. It CCs pets and all this. It doesn't CC players, but it does AoE damage. So if you have, like, a triple stun, and you're playing someone like, I don't know, Elemental Brewmaster, right? If you have them all in a triple stun, you Nyuza out, and you just did AoE damage with that Elemental Shaman, you could essentially just rot the team. It's a really good concept, not the best for the three minute cooldown, but I think it's better than Special Delivery. And that's how I think is the best here is Rushing Jade Wind, has no has no cost, that's the best part about it. Does not that much damage for the time taken to do it all, but it has a long duration, the cooldown is shorter, so you can essentially just keep this up permanently because you can spam it and you won't ever lose energy or anything for it. So I just run this pretty much baseline. Now for your level 100 talent, I run Blackout Combo, High Tolerance, and Elusive Dance. So this is a mixed up tree. There's situations for each one. High Tolerance I feel is really good when you need more staggered damage. So if you were in like a fight or something and you, needed, you had to protect your team, right? You put Guard in them. You could run High Tolerance to increase the damage you staggered from the staggered damage already coming in. So you actually take more that you can purify off for damage. Elusive Dance, same concept, you get, you just stagger more damage, as simple as it gets. But I personally run Blackout Combo, and here's the reason why. You do more damage, you get bruised back faster. So Blackout Combo, essentially how I use it, I always have a Blackout Strike done before any ability I use. I will actually stop using Globals if I don't have a Blackout Strike up because I want to keep that Blackout Combo useful. It increases damage, the best part about it though is when you blackout uh, use your blackout combo, so you blackout strike and then you keg smash. It reduces the cooldown on your bruise by a significant amount. That's pretty much the best part about it. It increases damage by 200% of your attacker's palm, which actually you'd say like 200% oh, of your literally a jab is garbage. Well, the thing is, 200% of that can hit upwards of 400k. That's pretty consistent for. A zero CD cooldown and a three second cooldown ability. Not horrible at all. Next, we'll do your PvP talents Gladiator's Medallion, Adaptation, Relentless. I mean, I just pretty much run Trinket every single game just because I like it better. You could run Relentless against Sub Rogues just because of the CC reduction. Simple. Then you have Relentless Assault, Soft and Blows, and Admonishment. Admonishment is just the best. You get 5% damage per target that hits the target you taunted for a 20 second cooldown. But as long as you're hitting that target, it keeps that taunt stack alive. So Rushing Jade Wind actually synergizes really well with this because it will constantly keep that target tagged, meaning it will consistently reset that ability so that it will constantly be doing damage, increasing damage, it will never fall off. And then Relentless Assault, you get 5% damage. Sorry, my bad. 3% damage per person that attacks you, and I think it stacks up to 5 times, maybe 6 times, so you're not you're getting a lot if you're getting trained, but realistically nobody's going to train a tank if they're smart. Soft and blows, you take less damage, not good. Your third tree is Fast Feet, Eminence, Nayuzao's Essence. Honestly, this is a rough tree. I don't like Eminence actually as Brewmaster because you don't have port heal like a Windwalker does, so I don't find it even remotely good. The reduction on your port is just useless. Nayuzao's Essence reduces all snares, on you when you roll or you use a brew. Not the worst thing. Fast feet, I pretty much just run baseline as Windwalker and Brewmaster just because it's reduction on snares on you. It's simple. Your fourth tree, Hot Shrub, Microbrew, and Eerie Fermentation. Microbrew is really good if you need to be really defensive. Now keep in mind, you get Fort Brew. Half, you, you think, just think of the talent alone. 50% reduction on your wall. Well, that's pretty good. What's 50% of 7 minute cooldown? Well, 3.5 minutes, not that great, realistically. You, you have 2 minutes longer on your wall than a Windwalker does. That's horrible. Airy Fermentation is just scaling magic damage incoming. Not the best. It, pretty much, I just run Hot Shrub baseline because it's, it's burst. That is your burst. You will never do damage if you do not run Hot Shrub. What happens is you have a stagger, so all damage you take 
you stagger some of it. That's why brewmasters are really good at dealing with burst pressure because you stagger a lot of the damage and then you can purify that off. So what happens is when you use a purifying brew, you actually reduce the damage you're taking, but you also dish it out. So what purifying brew does is half of the damage you stagger. So you have stagger. Let's say you took a million stagger. Well, purifying brew will reduce that by 50%. So it, it just takes that 50% of it completely off instantly. But then you have hot shrub to combine with this. Hot shrub means 50% of that damage you staggered is done around you. Now, this used to be a really good talent. I'm not going to lie. This used to be OP, but PvEers abused it on raid realms. Like a PvP realms, they abused it. When raids were getting ready outside of raids, they would bug. They would duel, right? And then they would go up to those guys, and they would purify and all that stagger off, because the brewmaster won't die in PvE. Let's be realistic here. He's not going to die. So they just stacked that stagger up, went into the group, and then just bombed them. They just spam purifying group, and that group just died instantly. It was gone. So they nerfed it to 50%, used to be 100%. It was really fun, though. Next, you have Guided Meditation, Guard, and Craft Nimble Brew. I'm not even going to talk about two of these talents. Zen guided Meditation is just a reduction on your Zen Meditation cooldown. Zen Meditation is already garbage. Craft Nimble Brew is just uh, it's. It's a trinket, essentially. The only hard part about it is you have to craft it, right? You get two charges of it. You can trade it to any of your team, but you can only use it once in combat. So it's like a health stone. Not that good considering your spec. And then I run guard pretty much baseline because it's fucking broken. It synergizes really well with hot truck. You guard your team. Understand this. You guard your team for 15 seconds. You reduce their damage incoming by 30%, because it staggers over to you. So 30% of the damage they take for 15 seconds comes to you as stagger damage. And then you can use that to do damage with Hot Shrub. Now the best part about this, it's 15 seconds, right? Well, it's a 45 second cooldown. So you pretty much have it 33% of the time, 100% of the time. Your final tier is Incendiary Breath, Double Barrel, Mighty Ox Kick. Now, I know a lot of people are, are going to like Mighty Ox Kick because it just sounds really fun. Like, I'm not going to lie, when I first played Windwalker and then I played Brewmaster after, Mighty Ox Kick was just like, it was fun. You got to troll people, you got to knock them out of line of their healers, it was so much fun, but I realized it's actually the worst talent. Compared to Incendiary Breath and Double Barrel that offer, offer utility, as the spec already is a utility spec, these two talents are just the best. I've talked with Reki about this. It's actually entirely opinion based or situational based. If you're playing with a Warlock, you don't want to run Incendiary Beth because you DR their fears, but you'd run Double Barrel then. If you're playing a heavy melee cleave with stuns, you don't want to run Double Barrel because you DR their stuns. The hard part though is if you run Double Barrel and you have Gladius, it doesn't track the stun DR. So you have to be very careful about how you use it. Plus part though is you get a lot more damage in the keg smash, it's already a really low cooldown for a 45 second stun. Or, sorry, 45 second cooldown for a 3 second stun. And Sendary Breath is what I really much run baseline. The only bad part about it is it increases your duration, your cool reduction of your dragon's breath. Your breath of fire becomes a dragon's breath. It does more damage, has a much, much, much bigger cooldown. Like, I'm not going to lie, I've queued into people like Wealthy Man, all of them, healers, like Flays, all of them. And when I play Brewmaster to them and I run this talent, they get so pissed off because this is a Disorient. It is a Dragon's Breath on crack. It does so much damage considering the cooldown and the usage of the ability. But the cone is so big, you can literally breath somebody from half the arena away. It's amazing. It's a like if you ran Fire Mage, they never need to run a Dragon's Breath in the game unless they want to use it to peel themselves because it's just you could be on one pillar and halfway to the next pillar you could breath somebody from that distance. It's so big and it's so good. So now we're gonna go on to your burst and consistent damage. I'm gonna quickly run down abilities for remasters so that you can understand what they do and how they work. So I'm gonna give you one more thing quickly. Purifying Brew and Iron Skin Brew, they share the same charges. So you'll see on my bars right now that I have three stacks of each. If I use a Iron Skin Brew, it makes them both two. They share the stacks. It's not useful. So 
let's start off with this. So your first ability will be Blackout Strike. Three second cooldown, decent damage, generates a stack of Elusive Brawler. Elusive Brawler is a stack that stacks infinitely on you, increases your dodge chance. You can have up to 30,000 stacks of Elusive Brawler if you really tried for it. If you have the time to spend in-game to get that high applause to you, you have no life. Next, Breath of Fire. It's a cone in front of you, 180,000 damage, generates a stack of Elusive Brawler for every target hits. It also burns over time if your Keg Smash was already applied to the target. 15 second cooldown. Not bad. Incendiary Breath, that talent, if you run it, makes us a 30 second cooldown, increases the damage, increases the cone, disorients them, it's a Dragon's Breath, and it does, okay, one more thing, you would think like, oh, it's a disorient like Dragon's Breath, right? Well, damage will break it. Well, not entirely true. The burn damage from Breath of Fire, if it's on an incendiary breath target, so if they're in the CC, that burn damage will not break the breath. It's really decent. Next, we have Expel Harm. 15 energy, heals you, does 10% of the healing done as damage to area around you. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what this is. You'll remember Healing Spheres from Mob. Well, Healing Spheres, they're somewhat brought back, but not really. When you take damage as a Brewmaster, the lower health you go, the higher chance you have at proccing a Healing Sphere to spawn. Well, Healing Sphere in this is you don't have to run over it. You can use Expel Harm to drag them all into you to heal you, and then you do the damage out. So it, it's a healing sphere, but with a different setup, I guess. It's the best way to put it. Next, we have our artifact ability, Exploding Keg, 40 yard range, one and a half, one, well, 1.25 minutes, but I really think of it as one and a half because you're really not going to use it every 1.25 minutes. So you hurl a keg, deals damage, but here's where the troll part comes in. Against melee, if they are hit by exploding keg for three seconds, they cannot do anything essentially. All melee attacks, all melee abilities are not usable on anything for those three seconds. If you use them, they're put on cooldown, but they do nothing. So if your healer is getting trained, for example, and they need a peel but you don't have any CC for them, throw a keg down. Those melee can't kick them, they can't hurt them, they can't do anything for three seconds. It gives your healer time to heal up. It's really good cooldown, really strong and consistent. Next we have four proof seven minute cooldown. Woo! What fun is this? 15 seconds. Max health increased by 20%. Increases the damage you delay with stagger by 10% and reduces all damage you take by 20%. What fun! A seven minute cooldown that does absolutely garbage because you're a tank spec. If you're dying as a tank and you use this, it's not helping you really. It really is not. You all you do is reduce damage. You don't get any health out of it. It's not like Mop or Wadwin Walker. It's not good. It's just not good. Next, you have Iron Skin Brew. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown. The green text you're reading, 18.1 second recharge. Well, this is affected by your haste. So when you look at my character screen, you can see that I have 16% haste. If I had 40% haste, this cooldown would be even lower. But it's a pretty decent cooldown, all things considered. So Iron Skin Brew just increases the damage you delay the stagger by 35% for 8.5 seconds. As I said before, it shares charges with Purifying Brew. So, how I use this really is when I guard somebody, I'll pop an Iron Skin Brew instantly so I delay even more damage. It just helps relieve pressure, I guess, is the best way to put it. And that's your job as a Brewmaster, it's just to relieve the pressure coming onto you and your team. So, finally, the best ability that we have. Keg Smash, 40 energy, 25 yard range, 6.9 second cooldown based off of haste. You smash a keg on the target, deals damage, a pretty decent amount of damage. And all enemies within 8 yards are slowed for 15 seconds. Considering 15 seconds slow for 6.9 second cooldown, that's really good. And then when you use this, you reduce the remaining cooldown on your bruise. I gotta clarify something as well. When it says bruise, it's only talking about purifying brew and iron skin brew. It does not affect your fortifying brew which sucks. So you pretty much want to keep this on cooldown. It's just a strong, a strong ability. Really, it is. Next, we have Purifying Brew. 18.1 second recharge, the exact same as Zen, as a uh, Iron Skin Brew. It's instant. Clears 44% of your damage delayed with Stagger. So actually, I lied earlier. It's 44%, not 50%. But essentially, I think 44 and 50 are not that far apart. Now, you gotta keep in mind, 
So let's say you have a million stagger, right? Pure fine brew, 44% is gone right there. And then 50% of that is dealt. So what's 44% of 1 million? Well, that's going to be 440,000. So you pure fine brew that off. You're taking 440% less damage. Or sorry, 440k less damage. I shouldn't have said percent. And then you're doing 220,000 damage to everything around you. It's not split among targets. It's pure damage to everything around you. Get People don't understand that. It's not split. Now we have Zen Meditation. Exact same as Mop and Wad. Just reduces damage taken by 80%. That's actually the difference though is it's all damage. Not just caster damage. So now we're going to talk about our passives. Remaster's Balance. It's just a passive armor increase. Decent. Not the best on things. Next we have Celestial Fortune. It's a passive. You have a chance equal to your crit to be healed for an additional 65% of the amount healed. So when you expel a harm, you have a chance based on your critical strike to be healed for an extra 65%. So you get healed for, let's just say 100k. You heal yourself for 100k. You have a chance based on your crit rating to get 65% of that added onto it. It's how when it's how brewmasters really just live. So this is what I was talking about your healing spheres. Get to the ox is a passive. When you take damage, you have a chance to summon a healing sphere visible only to you. Moving through this sphere heals you for 456k. Well, you can use expo harm to use those spheres, and it does the exact same thing, but does damage to targets around you. Now, I'm gonna clarify something really, really quick. When you look at your talents and you go to Gift of the Mists, well, it has a chance up to 75% to trigger. It has infinite trigger chance, and it's based on your missing health. So the lower you go, higher chance you get at proccing these. Next, we have Mastery. It's your elusive Roller stack. So as I was talking about earlier, that you can get pretty much off every ability. Every time you're hit by a melee attack or hit with Black Oak Strike slash Breath of Fire, you gain a stacking 30% increased dodge chance until your next successful dodge also increases your attack power. Well, that means until you dodge something, you have infinite dodge, but you gotta understand something. Even if you have 100% dodge chance, you're not guaranteed to dodge anything. So you could essentially get this up to 300 stacks. Well, what's 300 times 30%? Well, I don't know, it's probably 9,000%. Well, 9,000% dodge, that doesn't guarantee a dodge. So yeah, you're getting all this, but it's kind of just useless. Like our mastery is really just useless in the exception to the attack power we get, which does scale with all abilities that do physical damage, which is everything except for Breath of Fire and Exploding Keg. And now, the reason I think Brewmaster is the hardest spec in the game. Stagger. All attacks coming into you delay 40% of the physical damage, instead taking it over 10 seconds. It affects magical attacks as well at a 56% effectiveness. So when it says it affects magical attacks, it's 56% of the 40% of the physical damage that you would have taken in a Saiyan. So what's 56% of 40%? Well, that's what you're taking from it. Well, now the issue is, is you have 10 seconds essentially to stagger, to take it off with your purifying grief burst, because over those 10 seconds, you're taking that damage still. It's just over the 10 seconds. So if you had a million stagger, right? If you didn't take any of that off, 10 seconds gone by, you've taken 100k damage every second. It's a really good ability, but really hard to manage. So now we have our burst and consistent pressure. Well, here's the thing about Brewmaster is we don't really have burst. And I can prove it to you. What burst do we have? What abilities do we have that get buffed in damage when we use an ability? Well, none. The only thing we have is our hot shrub. Well, hot shrub is very situational. Are you able to stagger enough damage? that you can purify 44% of that off to deal 22% of that damage that you staggered as damage. Yes, like in RBGs, if you've seen me or Reki playing an RBG as Brewmaster, you'll know, like, if we go into a team fight, we guard our whole team, and the other team pops their burst, you're gonna see that team obliterate. They, they're they gonna be gone. Reki and I, we will destroy them. They, they won't live. Like, I'm going to give you an instance. Last night, we were doing RBGs as double Brewmaster. We went into a team fight. Reki alone had an orb as Brewmaster. He went straight into a team fight and guarded six people. He had seven killing blows in about four seconds. 
it was really strong, but you also got to consider that was very situational on the other team being completely stupid. So yeah, we got really great burst, all in purifying group, but it's not much about it. If you're looking for burst outside of burst, but outside of consistency, essentially what we would do is blackout strike, keg smash, and then exploding keg. This is your burst right here. That's 600k, but keep in mind this is PvE damage. I hit for about 1.6 million, and then after that, I do another exploding keg that I hit for about another million. So I hit about 2 million damage really quickly. This is in PvE though, so you're not going to get about the exact numbers. They're going to be reduced a bit. It still gives you an idea. Those are your three basically hard hitting abilities. So when you're looking at your consistent pressure, as I said earlier when I was talking about blackout combo, I pretty much hold globals if I don't have blackout strike up. My rotation is generally blackout strike, keg smash, blackout strike, breath of fire, blackout strike, tiger's palm. Right here, I'd probably just use like a chi burst or something, blackout strike, keg smash. It's just using that ability as a baseline. It's really low cooldown. It does really decent damage for the cooldown considering. And you can just spam abilities with it. If you're feeling spicy, you can actually put a tiger's palm in before, like as you can see here, I can put tiger's palm in before the abilities come up. Well, look, I still have cooldown. Tiger's palm is a global, but it's also very dependent on your haste. You're not going to really get it off if you have either low haste or you have high haste. So your consistent pressure you'd think is really good, but not in reality. Somewhere in there, you can even just throw in a Russian Jade in right here. You see, I have the time for it. So there's just things you can do that make sense. Well, you see, I don't have my black kegs my truck, right? So I just keep switching around abilities. I make sure though, but before I use any of my core abilities, that I always have blackout strike up to combo with my blackout combo. It just works really well together. If you are in a sticky situation though in a fight and you need bruise, you can just spam Tiger's Palm or as some people know it as Jab because it reduces the cooldown, right? Like, it's just really simple and it's mathematical. You can just spam this right here. I'll even use my Blow Off Torn to get more energy so I can get more out. It's just about synergizing abilities. That's all it is. So, let's go on to what we do in a game as a Brewmaster. Well, I'm going to clarify something really quickly. As a brewmaster, you take damage to do damage. So your entire kit is actually revolved around your guard ability. You have to take your team's damage, and then you have to do that damage back to the other team. So, I mean, what are you really getting out of this in a game? Well, in a game, you're looking for split pressure, you're looking for AoE pressure, you're looking for setup, I guess. The best way to put it is setup. You're never going to land a kill unless you set up a kill. So you need CC, you need your stun, all this crap. So if you can't get that, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to dampen at that point. I'm actually not going to lie to you. In arenas, I found Brewmaster to actually be good at all stages in the game. Their stagger helps really well in dampening. But in the early game, they can still do a crazy amount of damage if you're really lucky. It's a, it's a luck-based spec, honestly. So in a game, you are prioritizing to play really close to your team. Like, I'd honestly say, if you're gonna play something like a Brewmaster Mage, for example, like a Brewmaster Caster, you wanna play the Holy Pally. I, I don't care who you are or what you think you know, you wanna play the Brewmaster Holy Pally. I don't care what your DPS is, that Holy Pally is required. He runs melee wins, okay? And your job is to stack everybody so you get guard on your whole team, and then you can go in. In RBGs, it's a little harder, right? You have 10 people. Well, you, you're not really going to get a 10-man guard a lot of the time unless your team stacks specifically for that 15 seconds. But you still get a decent one-off. I've hit upwards of 8 people with my guard. It's really good. It's all you're really going to be useful for is that reduction. I'm not going to lie. People don't like playing tanks. Like, I, I find all these DPS are like, oh, yeah, let's play the Brewmaster. Dude, let's play the Brewmaster. And then we find a healer. And it's just like, I don't want to play the tank. It's like, dude, it's just a Windwalker with no burst. And utility. It's how the spec was always meant to be played. So it's a little annoying, but there's not much actually about Brewmaster in arenas. Even in RBGs, it's not much. Actually, I will talk about RBGs quickly though. I've tried tanking in RBGs as a, uh, like for FC, right? I'll, I'll FC as Brewmaster. It's not that good. Um, you have issues with mobility. Your port helps a lot, but you find issues living actually. You'll live the burst really easily because that's how your spec is designed. But then the consistent pressure comes in and that's where Brewmaster falls off. 
There's not much to talk about, actually. So, closing thoughts now. Honestly, if anybody from Blizzard actually watches this or listens to this to understand how they could fix Brewmaster or make it better in PvP, at least viable, well, you got to start off with bringing back abilities from Mop. Mop Brewmaster was actually just... It was fun. It really was. And bring Dizzy King Haze back, at least. But, uh... Generally, I think Brewmaster is a really high skill spec. F considering Legion prunes so much that a lot of the classes and specs right now have almost no skill cap and or have none. It's really nice to see a spec that requires you to pay attention. You don't just win off of pressing buttons. You actually have to pay attention to every single person on your team, along with every single person on the other team, and then yourself, your abilities, your cooldowns, your stagger damage, your health, all this. Is just so much to actually watch for that it makes the spec really fun. If I wanted to see Brewmaster like really consistent and viable at least, I'd say give us more single target damage rather than AoE pressure. Even if you want to give us more AoE pressure than single target, at least give us like maybe, I don't know, two charges of keg smash. It's something, but it wouldn't help a lot. Uh, another idea would be just give us more utility that actually matters, like, I don't know, disarm, zen meditation, eating traps on a lower cooldown, maybe. Spinning fire blossoms even would be good. Like, as a brewmaster, you're actually not using a lot of your energy, so having spinning fire blossoms cost energy would be pretty decent for a brewmaster, because you have so much excess pooled. It's just small things, really. Brewmaster needs more damage rather than utility, but I like the utility. I'm not going to lie, brewmaster utility is a lot of fun, a lot of specs could benefit from it if the current meta in WoW wasn't just run things down. Like, honestly, like, what comp do you know that just doesn't run damage down the train? Like, I guess you could say my Windwalker Arcane with Volcazar and Melol. Yeah, that comp does require setup, but we could still run things down. Like, I don't know. It's just, it handles burst well. Brewmaster really does, but it's not good and consistent run them down kind of damage. And that sucks because it's a fun spec. It's really nice to play and have something different than other people. Reki and myself, we're the only ones. We want the spec to be buff. We want it to be viable, but we can't because Blizzard doesn't listen. I get perma forum banned for saying, I want to buff Brewmaster. Why can't you guys buff Brewmaster? That doesn't make sense. Like, I go from a two-week suspension on the forums to a permaban, that's just not fair. Generally though, I'd say Brewmaster works really well if you're if you're actually looking to play it. I'd say it works really well with other melee. Uh, in Arena through experience, I would say it works really well with an Affliction Warlock, a Destro Warlock, uh, maybe a Mage, I don't know about that one just because of how squishy they are. And I could see it being good with an Elemental Shaman or an Enhanced Shaman but not much else. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed and have a good day.